द ब्लू बीड इज अ फिक्शनल स्टोरी सेट इन द जंगल्स ऑफ इंडिया इट हैज बीन रिटन बाय नोरा बर्क एन इंग्लिश राइटर ऑफ नॉवेल्स एंड नॉन फिक्शन हर फादर वॉज अ फॉरेस्ट ऑफिसर इन इंडिया एंड शी स्पेंड हर अर्ली चाइल्डहुड ट्रेवलिंग थ्रू जंगल्स ऑन एलिफेंट बैक it was at this time that she observed jungle life closely now let us look at the story in brief sibia is a young tribal girl who wants a blue bead for her necklace one day she witnesses a crocodile attacking a woman sibia rushes to the woman's defense and attacks the crocodile the crocodile is injured in the eye by sibia's hay fork and backs away later when sibia returns to the spot she finds a blue bead there and is overcome with joy the main characters in the story are the crocodile who is the antagonist and sibia who is the protagonist the crocodile was fully grown he was twice the length of a tall man he was ferocious wild and powerful He lived in the deep waters of the great river in the jungle. This was his natural habitat. He was very strong especially in the water. He had a powerful tail which propelled his body at great speed and strong jaws which could clamp down forcefully on his prey and drag it down to the depths of the river. His hide was so thick that even rifle bullets bounced off it. The only way to kill or injure him was to pierce his eyes or his soft underarms he lurked around in the shallow waters of the river among the rocks and logs of timber waiting for his prey only his eyes and nostrils could be seen above the surface of the water the rest of his body was under water he had a huge body but when he was still you would see no movement except for the throb in his throat he ate pie dogs fish deer monkeys thin cows and mostly dead humans sibia was a 12 year old girl she lived in the jungle and was very poor she had very little food to eat and was dressed in rags she was born to toil although she could not afford them she enjoyed looking at sweets bangles cloth and other fine things in the bazaar to her these were the wonders of the world she wanted to make a necklace for herself and a blue bead would add beauty to it now let us look at the crocodile in detail he was hatched by the sun in a sand bank he had broken his shell got his head out and looked around ready to snap at anything even before being fully hatched he had immediately run into the water ready to look after himself he had managed to escape the birds of prey and carnivorous fishes that eat baby crocodiles he caught his food and stored it in holes in the bank of the river slowly he grew stronger and bigger till he was twice the length of a tall man now let us look at the blue bead the blue bead was not actually a gem it was in all probability a piece of glass or a bottleneck it had been rolling around in the river since a long time it was perforated in between and had acquired a round shape when the sunlight fell on it it glittered just like a gem in the story sibia is introduced to us as a thin starving child coming out of a mud hut in the jungle village she is dressed in an earth colored rag and has torn the rag in two parts to make a skirt and sari she is eating a piece of chapati with a smear of chili and stale butter she is taking small bites in order to make her meal last longer she is cold barefoot and very poor since she was a toddler she had learned to work and she could husk corn gather sticks put dung to dry cook weed fetch water and cut grass for fodder but she was a happy girl the author in fact calls her 
a happy immature child woman because she was contented with whatever she had she wanted beautiful things but did not hanker after them and although she was a child she had to work as much as any grown up woman She had been to the bazaar with her parents and brothers. There, she saw many beautiful things, such as glass beads, glass bangles, sweetmeats, new cotton cloth stamped at the edge with the maker's sign of a tiger's head, satin sewn with real silver thread, tin trays from Birmingham, sarees embroidered with chips of looking glass. dawn colored silks a locked chest supposed to contain turquoises and opals a toy box with a tinkling bell and a yellow woolen chicken jumping out to her these were the wonders of the world she may have been too poor to buy anything but she enjoyed looking at these things she stood amazed taking in all the sights and sounds and smells of the bazaar However, she did long for something. Some of the women in her village used to wear necklaces made out of lal lal beads. These were tiny scarlet seeds that grew everywhere in the jungle. They made new ones every year since their seeds faded in color over time. Sibia was making one too and felt very happy imagining what it was going to be like. to hear the rattling swish of the necklaces around her neck but there was a problem each seed had to be drilled with a hot needle to make necklaces and their family needle was broken so she had to wait till they could buy another one she playfully wished she could have strings and strings of glass and beads anklets earrings nose rings and bangles that were available in the bazaar to decorate herself Near Sibia's village there was a Gujar encampment. The Gujars were nomads. They traveled from place to place with their buffaloes. They set up temporary camps at suitable places. There they sold white butter and white milk. They also sold young male buffaloes as tiger bait to shikaris. When their cattle had finished all the grazing within reach or when they were not able to sell their produce or when their camp was attacked by a cattle killing tiger they would move on the gujar women wore tight trousers and silver jewelry they stayed behind taking care of the camp while the men went out now let us look at what happened one day when sibia set out with her mother and the other women of her village to get paper grass they had to walk from their village to the river carrying their hay forks and sickles then they crossed the river together talking loudly and clanking their sickles and forks together as they jumped over the stepping stones thus they made as much noise as they could to frighten the crocodile and crossed over safely on the other side they climbed a still hillside and worked all day climbing up wherever they could and cutting as much grass as they could find they would later have it taken down to an agent for sale who would pay them and then send it to the paper mills they worked all day while the agent sat on cushions smoking a hookah while cutting the grass sibia observed the great river flowing below them and her surroundings kingfishers and turtles were there mahseer fish weighing more than 100 pounds also were to be found in the river one could also see crocodiles sunning themselves on the slabs of clay at the bank but today none were to be seen sibia remembered the little clay cups that she had made as a child and that she had stored them in the little cavelets near the river if she could paint them with marigolds and elephants they would look very beautiful when all of them started on their journey back home sibia hung back because she wanted to go and see the little clay cups
By the time she reached the river, all the other women had crossed back. She was all alone, but this did not bother her. She was carrying a lot of weight, the bundle of grass which she had cut, a hay fork and a sickle. She began crossing the river by stepping on the stones. When she was halfway through, she put her load on a big boulder to rest and stood there, leaning on her fork, breathing heavily. At that moment, a Gujar woman came down to the water on the other side with two brass gadas to fill water. She walked on to the stepping stones. The crocodile was hiding there and he attacked her. She screamed. The gadas fell and floated away in the river. The crocodile bit her leg and pulled. The woman slipped and fell on the stone and clung to a log of timber to save herself. The crocodile began pulling at her with all his might. Sibia sprang. She took her hay fork and ran over the stepping stones smoothly like a rock goat. She ran without even thinking of her own safety and in one moment she reached the screaming woman. The crocodile's eyes rolled towards Sibia. He struck at her with his mighty tail. The rock shook under the blow. But Sibia did not hesitate. She used all the force of her little body to aim at the crocodile's eyes and drove her hay fork into one of them. The crocodile reared up in pain till half his reptile body was out of the water. Then his body fell back and he disappeared. He would be found dead with pus in his eye a few days later. Sibia dragged the fainting woman from the water. She stopped her wounds with sand, bound them with rag and helped her home to the camp. Then she came back to the river to collect her grass and sickle and fork. As she bent to pick up her fork, she saw the blue bead. She picked it up. It lay in her palm shining like gold in the light of the setting sun. All her heart went up in flames of joy. She set off home overjoyed. Her bare feet walked over the wriggle mark of snakes in the dust. One could hear the buzz of malaria mosquitoes and the track that she was walking on was used at this time by a dangerous old elephant known as the tuskless one. But Sibia was not bothered. She looked at the stars that had come out in the sky. On the way, she met her mother who had come looking for her, worried. Her mother scolded her, saying, I thought something must have happened to you. At this, Sibia said, something did. I found a blue bead for my necklace. Look! It was the blue bead, not her heroic act of saving the woman from the crocodile that was the best and most extraordinary part of her day. Now let us recap the sequence of events in the story. The story begins with a description of the crocodile. Then we come to the description of the blue bead. After that, we are introduced to Sibia. Then we learn about Sibia's experiences at the bazaar. After that, we come to the main part of the story where Sibia sets off towards the other side of the river to cut paper grass. Her mother and other women are with her. On the way, she thinks how nice it would be if she could have strings of glass and beads to decorate herself. She passes by a Gujar encampment and observes the women there. She crosses the river with the other women and works all day cutting paper grass. While cutting the grass, she observes her surroundings and then remembers the little clay cups that she had made as a child. On the way back, she gets distracted as she decides to go and check on the little clay cups. She falls behind the other women. As she crosses the river, she sees the crocodile attack the Gujar woman and fights the crocodile with her hay fork. The crocodile withdraws and she helps the Gujar woman to the camp. Then she finds the blue bead as a gift and is overjoyed. She is no longer thinking about the crocodile. Finding the blue bead has made her day. 
points to ponder. Why does the writer describe the crocodile the way she does? What do you think of Sibia's fascination regarding her experiences at the bazaar? Why did Sibia not hesitate before springing to the woman's help? Why is the ending of the story remarkable? And how does the ending of the story justify its title? I would like to convey my heartfelt gratitude to my friends and well-wishers for their encouragement and suggestions in the creation of this video. I fervently hope that this video will help students understand the topic independently and that they will find this useful. Suggestions and feedback are welcome. Please post them in the comments below. Thank you.